Hey, how about a little good news, huh? So much bad news in this election cycle. Here's some good news. Turns out Senate progressives, activists plan a big public option push. What's that, Jimmy? So right now, uh, if you're 65 years or older, you have what they call Medicare, meaning you go to the doctor, they send a bill to the government, the government pays the doctor, you don't have to worry about it. It's called Medicare. Now, medic that's how it works in the rest of the industrialized world, by the way. You go to Canada, A, you go to England, or go across the pond, you go to France, Germany, that's how it works. Uh, except here in America, because why? Because our government is bought by people making money off of sick people, which is why we pay twice as much in America for our health care as the rest of the industrialized world, which was funny because people were like, oh, Bernie wants to give everybody health care. How's he going to pay for that? I mean, how are we going to afford a cheaper health care system? So this is good news. What this is, they wanted to put this in Obamacare. Remember Barack Obama, he gave speeches where he said, I will not sign a health care bill that does not include a public option. What a public option means is that instead of buying insurance from uh, Blue Cross or Aetna or Cigna, you go and buy it from the government. You buy into Medicare, basically. You go, hey, I would like a policy and I would like Medicare to cover me. OK, here's a reasonable rate. Here it is. Go get your health care. That's called the public option. So when it came down to it, Ben Nelson, who was in the pocket of the health insurance companies and was a senator from Nebraska, and he would not vote for the Obamacare because it included the public option. So Barack Obama took it out, went against his word, did the bidding of corporations once again, wouldn't even give us the public option. In fact, not only did he not go to Ben Nelson's state and tell the people what Ben Nelson was doing, screwing them over, which is what Ben Nelson was doing, screwing over Americans in behest of rich corporations. That's what Ben Nelson was doing. So Barack Obama said, OK, I'll let you screw over Americans. There was a guy named Dennis Kucinich who was pushing for the public option. And what did Barack Obama do? Did he go to Nebraska and tell people what Ben Nelson was doing? No. He went to Dennis Kucinich's district and told his voters that he was screwing up Obamacare. That's who Obama is. So now there's a new they're, they're getting together for a new push for that thing. Senator Jeff Merkley from Oregon and Senator Bernie Sanders, interestingly enough, are among the leaders of the effort, which also includes three members of the Senate Democratic leadership, Dick Durbin, Chuck Schumer and Patty Murray. Now, Chuck Schumer is about as bad as they get. Thank you. As far as a Democrat, right, because he couldn't be more of a sucking at the Wall Street teat. Is, uh, is Chuck Schumer. He's bad for America because he's in bed with Wall Street. And let's remember, Wall Street's agenda is diametrically opposed to workers in America's agenda. And so he's Chuck Schumer, the leading Democrat in the Senate, is in bed with them. So he's against workers, which is weird that he comes out to do this, that they're going to give us the public option. It's weird. So that's good. Uh, the senators will introduce a resolution Thursday, this is last Thursday, calling for the creation of a public option and the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, that's our friend Adam Green, will spearhead a grassroots campaign to promote the cause to other senators and to Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton. It's going to promote the cause to other senators and promote the cause to our nominee. It's going to promote it to our own nominee because she's not familiar with it. She's not really sure if it's a good idea. Hillary's not sure if it's a good idea. They got to promote it. They got to talk to her. The revival of the public option comes after Clinton and President Barack Obama both endorsed it as a progressive priority this summer. <laughs> More than six years after liberal lawmakers left it out of the Affordable Care Act. More than six years. Six years ago. So it's six years and we're just bringing it back up now. It's an, it's an old idea. Just reduce the age to Medicare. And that's how you get the public option. Yeah. Drop, the, drop the age of Medicare to enrollment six, to 40. Six. Yeah, six. Because, you know, up until six, who cares? Yeah. If you can't make it. Moreover, bad news about Obamacare's health insurance exchanges, where premiums appear set to rise significantly for at least some customers and fewer insurers will be offering plans for next year. This has inv invigorated interest among Democrats and other supporters of the health care law in expanding health coverage and reducing costs. I wish they would put this through and stick it up the ass of all these health insurance companies because a public option puts them out of business. That's the, and that's the goal. 
That should be everybody's and, goals. And to- right now, you think the healthcare industry, the b- insurance industry, would be bending over backwards to make us happy because they don't want to go out of business. But that's the hubris. That's how much they know these lawmakers are in their pocket. Hey, we got rid of the public option once. We'll get rid of it again. Yeah, they're, they're not threatened by they're it. They're not threatened. That's why Cigna is still screwing over people and at not- But listen, Jimmy, health insurance companies provide an important resource to the public. It teaches us to be patient. It teaches us to understand about forms. It teaches us to to not put our our own health care needs ahead of the corporate profits of companies. And it it allows us to assimilate into being, oh, it's fucking ridiculous. It's got, it's it's, it's absurd. And and I'm tired of even calling it the Affordable Care Care Act. Act. It's barely care. It's not affordable. Right, it's the unaffordable kind of care. Yeah, yeah. And it's not Obamacare, it's Romney care. It's Romney care. It's Romney care. And everyone keeps forgetting that. And we put Obama's name on it, then it seems like it's a product of the left. It's not. It's a compromise of the right. Right? This is, once again, this is how power works in America, is they, 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 People get upset, and they give us exactly enough to shut up. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like it's like we the people are an itch on the government, and they scratch us a little bit, and that doesn't work. And they put on just enough ointment so that we we become dis- disinflamed. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like it's like the the Voting Rights Act, one of the great accomplishments of the civil rights movement, rolled completely back. Right? Mm-hmm. Once people shut up, people stopped campaigning for it. People stopped respecting it. People stopped understanding the historical significance of making sure that racist Southern states aren't racist in their in their voting rights. And and all of a sudden, a couple of years go by, we get a black president. Now everything's okay, and they roll it completely back. And within a day Day, within a day, they start suppressing. They the start vote. suppressing the vote. It's the same, same exact thing. Well, let's go back to this. Resolve that the Senate supports effort. This is Dave Reinitz, by the way. I don't know if I uh, and comedian Steph Zabarato was also here with us. Thank Resolved you, that the Senate supports efforts to build on the Affordable Care Act by ensuring that, in addition to the coverage options provided by private insurers, this is what the res- resolution says. Every American has access to a public health insurance option, which, when established, will strengthen competition, improve affordability for families by reducing premiums and increasing choices, and save American taxpayers billions of dollars. Yet, they're going to save them. The, those billions of dollars are coming directly out of the pockets of health insurers. And, and I wish they wouldn't sugarcoat it, because here's the thing. Is everybody voted for, hey, do you want to take the money back from your health insurance company? Everybody would vote for it. Yes. Do you want, do you want to have actual health care instead of health maintenance where they try to keep you sick as health long as possible so they can suck, they can suck the money out of it? You know what? I, I, I think I'm alone when I say this, but I was really looking forward to the death panels. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me I want to justify my existence in front of a, a a a bunch of old people that stand to make a profit by barely keeping me alive for a long time. Let's see. Here's the one last uh, thing from this article. The Progressive Change Campaign Committee has also partnered with other groups to generate support for enacting a public option next year, including MoveOn.org and Democracy for America. These organizations will create a petition for supporters to express their views at a new website, WeWantAPublicOption.com. I'm going to go there. WeWantAPublicOption.com. So let's. if this happens, this will be a big deal. Yeah, let's uh, sign a petition. That'll feel great. <laughs> no, I mean, if we get the public option. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. But, you know, Chuck Schumer's part of this. You know, he's the Manchurian candidate as far as health care reform so is. So who do you think gives us a better chance of the public option, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? Even though Hillary Clinton says she's for it, I don't think she is. I do not think she is. <sighs> I, I hate Because the public option, that's all we need. Yeah, but I mean, anything with the word public in it. I mean, Donald Trump's, you have to remember, Donald Trump's not going to do anything for anybody. I know. I'm just saying. So So there's zero chance with Donald Trump. You don't think he'll sign a public option bill and say, I gave health care to Americans? I think he will. I think he would say, I gave everybody health care. Who's going to get it through the Congress? That's the thing. You got to get it through the Congress. Well, if he's president, the House flips to Democrat in two years, and so does the Senate. So in two years, of, all we have to do is two years obstruct Trump, which we can do easily. Two year filibuster every bill in the Senate that is horrible. Plus, by the way, Paul Ryan is not going to usher through Trump's agenda. So anyway, in two years, the the Congress flips to Democrat. Then we get it through. Then we get the public. Ah, this is what I'm saying, baby. I'm, signing I'm telling the petition. you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, people are making a mistake. I am not voting for Donald Trump, but I cannot vote for Hillary Clinton because I think she would be worse. 
w- worse because she would get stuff done, like she said. Donald Trump's not going to be able to get dick done. I'm telling you, he won't be. He's an incompetent. Do, don't freak out. The same people who told us Hillary Clinton was a better candidate than Bernie Sanders are the same people telling us to be afraid of Trump. Well, same people. Uh, yes, and others. I mean, uh, you got to be afraid of Trump. You got to be afraid of Trump. It's a risk. He's it's terrifying. A, uh, you're, you're pretending like Hillary Clinton isn't a risk. No, I'm afraid I'm not. of Hillary I'm Clinton. I'm afraid Me of too. TPP. I'm TPP. Afraid of fracking. I'm fracking. More deregulation of Wall Street, and the banks are going to crash again. Mark my words. Well, the the banks, banks are going to crash again. The the banks the banks are doomed. I mean, it's all the the only thing keeping the American the American economy afloat is that we seem to be the most stable thing in the world. So all the European money, all this foreign money has been coming in buying our paper, and that's what's been keeping the the stock market afloat, which is of course the the visualization of the economy. There's more bubbles. There's more bubbles There's happening. Of right, bubbles. You know, I mean, right now we're back to bubble uh, prices on housing in California. No, oh, absolutely, it's above where it was before it's a, the crash. It's above before. So again, we have another. So believe me, sure. And this the whole loan, I, the student loan crisis is as big as the old housing crisis. The amount of people that can't pay their that ridiculous is- student loans for these scammy semi-college things. The, 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 there's a huge debt bubble. Of course there is. And, so, and- again, I'm telling you, the same people who are telling you Hillary's a great candidate and fracking's good and uh, de- 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 uh, the Iraq war was a good idea, they're all the ones telling us to be afraid of Trump. Listen, I think, I think, I think Clinton pushes the, kicks the pain down the road a little bit further. I think Trump, it's almost immediate. What? What, what kind of pain? D- the, the, the pain of going back to uh, 12% unemployment, the pain of uh, an Iranian boat flipped somebody off, so now we're, now we're at war with Iran. You know, his ability to just do incredibly stupid things on a whim. So you're saying that he might start a war in the Middle East, and so we should vote for the person who already did start a war in the Middle East. No, I'm not, I'm Ooh, not, advocate, I'm not tricky, telling anybody Jimmy. who that to vote this, I'm telling you, this is the goddamn thinking that people are doing, and it's easy to knock down, and it's easy to debunk, and it's like no one's ever pre- presenting the opposite point of view to these to these ideas well he might start a war she already did she already did she already started the worst war in our history sure it was illegal they didn't hold anybody accountable for it and then she learned the lesson from that and went right back and did it again in libya and now she's doing the same because she wants a bigger force in afghanistan she wants a no-fly zone in syria what the fuck are you guys talking about i changed my mind okay (laughs) 